This is the primary archaeology store where we keep archaeological finds from South Wiltshire and beyond. Now, when people come into this store, their eye is always drawn towards this incredible array of, of uh, wooden cabinets running down this side of the room, which are packed full of local archaeological finds. But the one I love in particular, this cabinet right in front of us here, this belonged to a man called Robert Newell, who was a volunteer at this museum and also a local archaeologist in the 20th century. He is perhaps most famous for the work that he did with Colonel William Hawley, at Stonehenge in the 1920s on the excavations which were funded by the Society of Antiquaries. He then also went on to write one of the official guidebooks of Stonehenge in the 1950s. But he was also a very avid collector of local archaeology. He lived in the Wiley Valley just to the, the west of Salisbury. And this cabinet is full of the finds he collected mainly from the local area. So let's, let's just have a look at uh, an example here of some of the things that he, he picked up. So one of the things he was very keen on was field walking on sort of local ploughed fields and he would turn up all these flint tools and many of the drawers in this cabinet are full of tools just like this. So this example here is the, it's the butt of a polished flint axe and this, this dates back to the Neolithic or the New Stone Age which is about six thousand years ago and actually you can see it's marked Wiley this is where it was found in fact it was found near where he used to live. Now when this was complete, it had a blade on here which is broken away and it would have been hafted or had a wooden handle that was attached at this end here. And a tool like this at the beginning of the Stone Age would have been used for clearing woodland, for chopping down trees. It was a time when farming was first introduced to this country and clearing woodland was absolutely essential if you wished to grow crops or raise animals. We have another incomplete example here. This is the butt of another one from Wiley. But with this example, there's a bit of plaster on it, which is interesting because we know that Robert Newell was very keen on restoring archaeological finds. In fact, in the Wessex Gallery, we have a pot, a grooved ware pot from the later Neolithic, from Durrington Walls, which he restored. And in fact, it's so important, this pot, that there's a copy of it in the Stonehenge Visitor Centre that you can see today. This example here is a chipped axe head it's from Bilbury Camp also in the Wiley Valley. You can just see the name of the place written there. The haft would have been attached at this end, or handle, and that's the chopping edge there. And this is a similar date to those two other examples, but a complete version and not polished. It's just chipped. But if you come down to the bottom here, you'll see some slightly more exotic items which he almost certainly didn't get from the local area. He may well have bought them actually from a, from a dealer. So my favourite thing in here are these flint daggers. This is a Scandinavian flint dagger and it represents the absolute high end of, um, of flint working. Um, this probably would have a handle at this end here, perhaps made of wood or or bone and then he's got these two beautiful edges but the person who made this was a highly skilled craftsperson the slightest mistake with manufacturing something like this and it would have shattered into many 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 pieces look how thin it is this is an object of beauty this is a, this is something that somebody owned who would have treasured it hugely now, in terms of date, it's not quite as old as the things we were looking at in the previous drawer. It probably dates back to the, um, the later Neolithic, possibly the early Bronze Age. So it's about 4,000 years old. But it gives you an example of how flint working technology developed. As I said, this, this, is, this is so highly skilled, producing something like this. And as I say, a real object of beauty. And we've got some other examples there as well. But alongside it, this is a, a Danish axe head it's made of polished flint so the surface on here just like the examples we looked at before it would have taken many 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 hours to produce the surface like that perhaps using something like sandstone to grind it down and then to shape it it would have been hafted at that end the wooden handle would have been at that end this is the chopping edge or blade here but this object a bit like the dagger that we just looked at is, is more than a functional object 
it is an object of beauty, it is finely made, but the person or the people who own things like this, they, they would have highly treasured these items because they were so finely made, but they were also objects of power. These are things that would have been given to other people as tokens of esteem, as tokens of friendship, as tokens of power, really respecting the power of another individual. They are beyond the functional and represent the absolute high end of, of, of stone and flint working technology. It's another example there, absolutely huge. And as you can see there, it says it's from Fleckerby in Denmark. It's beautiful. Finally, we have this curious object in this corner. That's a, a mace head. It's got a hole though, drilled all the way through the middle. Look at that. How was that done? I mean, this was probably done, what, sort of four and a half thousand years ago, something like that. The surface has been polished, but in someone we think has used a bow or a, you know, a bow and drill to actually make the hole through the middle. So this would have been a wooden shaft with a flint tip attached to it, attached to a, a bow which would have had string, and then the bow would have turned the, the, the drill to make the hole through the middle. Notice it has a hourglass perforation. So the hole was done from each end and it met in the middle. It would have taken many, many hours to manufacture something like that. And this also is from Denmark. So this drawer really represents the absolute high end of stone and flint working technology. And it's in fact one of my favorite, favorite drawers in the entire museum.